turned up to this one. It's a Worcester Bosch 30 IERP. Customer said that the water was pouring outside. To be fair, the pressure is at two and a half, and they weren't joking. It is wetter than a penguin slipper out here. It's cold water dripping here as well, as the customer hasn't been using the boiler. No point wasting time out here looking at it. Let's go back inside. We're going to pop the flap off underneath. The filling loop key isn't attached, so we know it won't be that causing the pressure increase. Going to pop a hose on. The reason I haven't isolated flow and return is because the boiler's at the highest point. There was quite a bit of pressure there. So we can see the pressure gauge has dropped, so we know the pressure gauge is all good. So now to prove a point, I'm going to do the drain off back up, take the hose off. We can see the pressure's on zero. I'm going to leave it five minutes. Still no filling loop attached and you can see the pressure creeping up. So what this is proving is the plate's obviously got a pinhole where the mains water pressure is and it's pushing into the central heating system. This is becoming quite a common fault. I carry the Worcester Bosch plates as van stock anyway. So I'm just going to reattach that hose again so you can see that a bit of water will come out and the pressure will drop. So I'm going to change the plate and the PRV. First thing I'm going to do is isolate the cold, open the hot tap to take the pressure off. There's no bleed point on the top of these 30 eyes, so I crack the nut on the expansion vessel and that seems to let all the water out. Then I'm going to pop the diverter valve motor out so that it drains both systems. Stick your finger in, give it a little wiggle. And then move that out of the way, we'll need that again in a bit. Going to disconnect the expansion vessel completely and pull that pipe out. My preferred method of the plate and the PRV change is taking the pump out. So we're going to disconnect all the electrics off the pump. Disconnect the flow turbine sensor. Disconnect the pump control speed. Pull the securing clip off for the expansion vessel pipe and the pressure gauge. I was a bit premature before, but now the pump speed control unit's coming out. You've got to move the little white securing clip and then gently pop that out. The expansion vessel pipe doesn't have to take some wiggling, but it will come out. Pressure gauge connection will just pop out. Crack the cold nut open. Pop the securing clip out. Try not to ping it off like I did. Then you're going to undo that pipe completely and just get it out of the way. Then get your grips on that little connection at the top. Pinches together and then it's like a bayonet. Just twists around. Then get your grips again on this little securing fork. Don't be scared to tug it quite hard. Make sure your waterproof bucket's underneath because a little bit of water will come out. But you'll be able to pull that to the left. And then it just pulls off. Another reason I like taking the pump unit out is you can give it a wash. I mean, look at the state of that. This system probably isn't the cleanest. Scrunch up some blue roll and put it both sides of the plate. Because when you manoeuvre the plate out, there's going to be some water that comes out, no matter how much you've drained it. That return pipe, you want to twist it all the way around to move it out the way. You'll see why in a bit. Undo the two securing screws. Once they're undone, you can do this one-handed. You drop the left-hand side down, the right-hand side up, and then it will literally just twist and maneuver out and then turn it that way so you don't drip on the PCB. Again, you can take that to the sink and just wash it out if you want. There's no need, it's not going back in. I don't do I told you so's, but if I did, there you go. Blue roll's wetter than the penguin slipper again. Pull that securing clip down that holds the PRV in place. Pull the turbine out. And then I'm going to pull the flow adapter out. To save the customer any return calls, I just change the flow adapter while I'm here because they always go brittle, they always leak. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pull the pin out for the PRV. Just use a screwdriver, don't be shy. And then just lever it out, get it out of the way. Look at the state of that absolute filth. Get that in the bin. There's the part number if you need it. I keep it as van stock. Then I'm going to lube up the rubbers for the PRV. The more you lube it, the easier it is. It can be a bit tricky to push this in. I normally line it up and then I just push my hand against the back wall, giving you enough force to push it in. A little tip to know whether it's in or not. If you've got a four sack clip in, 
then it's not in. If it just slides in like that, you know it's in. And then give it a wiggle, make sure it doesn't come out. And then push that secure and plastic clip back up. With the plate washers again, plenty of lube on it. And then pop them into place. The lube helps keep them in place as well for when you put the plate in. There's nothing worse than one of those dropping out and then you get wet when you fill up. And then just reverse technique to put the plate back in. Again, be careful not to knock the washers out. Once you've lined it up, tighten those screws up. And then we're going to prep that flow adapter, put all that together. Plenty of lube and then it just pops in. Then the flow turbine arrow goes in facing towards the boiler. Again, you'll feel it pop. And then we're basically going to put everything back together in reverse order. Didn't even need to take the condensed trap out. It's just one less fitting that you've disturbed. Tighten the cold back up if you don't want to get wet. Tighten the expansion vessel connection up. When you're happy, turn the cold main back on. Go turn the tap off. Then you're going to want to fill the heating system up. The arrow on the key points to unlock. You twist it to lock. Check it doesn't pull out. And then just open that until you get to the pressure that you want, which is about one and a half. Get to the pressure that you want. Turn the power back on. Take it off eco by pressing and holding eco. We'll turn it into preheat. That will give the boiler a demand. Can't be bothered to go and look for the room stack right now. I personally like letting it circulate through the boiler anyway. It gets most of the air out with the auto air vent inside. Green light means go. That's another one done. Happy days.